Greetings, math people of YouTube. Today we have a very interesting looking second order nonlinear differential equation where we have d squared y by dx squared equal to 1 by 1 minus y squared times dy by dx whole thing squared. Okay, cool. And since we have this autonomous differential equation, the transformation here is pretty standard. We're going to let dy by dx equal to u in an attempt to transform this into a first order differential equation. Now for the second derivative, we have d square y by dx squared equal to du by dx, which doesn't seem like much of an issue. However, this would mean we have a differential equation in u, x, and y, which is, of course, not such a good idea. So we can use the chain rule to work around this by writing du by dy times dy by dx. Now dy by dx is just our u variable, so we have u times du by dy equal to the second derivative. And now making use of our transformations, our differential equation looks like u times du by dy equal to 1 by 1 minus y squared times the square of the first derivative would be u squared. And now we can expand using 1 by u, and bear in mind this means that we lose one solution corresponding to u being equal to 0. But this of course implies that y prime is 0, and this means that y is just some constant of integration c, so we're not exactly missing out on anything exciting there. So we finally have du by dy equal to u divided by 1 minus y squared. And it looks like we did a pretty good job because we transformed our second order nonlinear differential equation into a first order differential equation that is in fact separable. So we'll just separate the variables. We have du by u equal to dy divided by 1 minus y squared. And of course we integrate yielding log u on the left and on the right we have the integral of, well, we need a partial fraction decomposition so we'll have 1 minus y and a 1 plus y. A plus sign will definitely work, so we'll have upstairs 1 plus y plus 1 minus y, which would be 2, so we need a factor of 1 half outside to balance this thing. This thing. Sorry, I just turned Jamaican for a moment. No, I will not do an entire video with a, with a Jamaican accent. I might do some more Russian accents or something like that. Definitely not Irish. So we're going to integrate this thing, right? Ah, uh, just sorry about that. Couldn't resist. We have one half times a bunch of stuff. What is that bunch of stuff? Well, the integral of 1 by 1 minus y is, of course, log 1 minus y with a negative sign plus the logarithm of 1 plus y, and we also have a constant of integration that I label as log a because everything else in a, is in a logarithm, so it's nice and convenient. So by that token, we have 1 half times the logarithm, making use of the properties of the logarithm, we combine all of them. We have a times 1 plus y divided by 1 minus y, which certainly looks cool. And of course, again, using the properties of the logarithm, we can write this as log root a times 1 plus y divided by 1 minus y and that implies that our u variable which is in fact dy by dx equals root a times 1 plus y divided by 1 minus y. And this is pretty cool because again we have a separable differential equation. So separating the variables gives us on the left we have root 1 minus y divided by a times 1 plus y dy equal to dx. And on integrating, we have on the right-hand side, that's x plus b, and this equals 1 by root a times the integral of what exactly? We're just left with root 1 minus y divided by 1 plus y dy. And now we can make a nice substitution here that is letting y equal to cosine terribly sorry about that, cosine 2 theta. And the reason for that is that 1 minus y would be 1 minus cosine 2 theta, which by the double angle formula is 2 sine squared theta. And similarly, 1 plus y is just 1 plus cosine 2 theta. 
terribly sorry about that again, equal to 2 times cosine squared theta. And that's pretty convenient. And what about the differential element? Well, differentiating, we have dy equal to negative 2 sine 2 theta d theta. So this implies that x plus b equals 1 by root a times the integral. Uh, let's see exactly what we have. We have 2 sine squared theta divided by 2 cosine squared theta. And then we have the differential element, which is negative 2, so negative sine outside, 2 sine 2 theta d theta. And of course, we have some lovely cancellation taking place, giving us negative 1 by root a times the integral of tangent theta. But no, I'm not going to write it as tangent. I'm going to leave it in the expanded form because we have 2 sine 2 theta. So expanding this gives us 4 times sine theta times cosine theta d theta. Some nice cancellation. And we have negative 2 by root a, terribly sorry about that, times the integral of 2 sine squared theta d theta, where I just kept a factor of 2 to again invoke the double angle formula. So we have negative 2 by root a times the integral of 1 minus cosine 2 theta. And of course, I could just write this as cosine 2 theta minus 1, avoiding the negative sign outside that, will, that I will probably forget. And integrating just yields 2 by root a times sine th 2 theta by 2 minus theta. And here we have x plus the constant b. And now we just need to work our way back into the x realm. Well, 1 half of sine 2 theta is just going to be equal to sine theta times cosine theta minus theta. And now we need to remember the relationship between sine, cosine, and y. Well, I have them written over here, so might as well make use of them. All we need to do is expand by 1 half and then take square roots. So by that token, we have x plus b equal to 2 divided by root a times, well, the cosine function would be root 1 plus y divided by 2. And here we have root 1 minus y divided by 2, which is pretty cool. And of course, we could have worked our way using the cosine 2 theta variable transformation as well whereby we just have one half of root one minus cosine squared theta, cosine squared two theta, which is y squared. Okay, cool, that is quite nice. Minus the theta variable, which is exactly what? So this is y. So that means we have theta equal to one half the inverse cosine of y, which is again pretty cool. So we have one half inverse cosine of y, and we can cancel out with a factor of two outside. So this implies that x plus b equals one by root a times root one minus y squared minus the inverse cosine of y, which is pretty nice looking solution indeed of x in terms of b. I hope you enjoyed the video. Be sure to like and subscribe. Do drop me a follow on Instagram as well. And in case you like the channel and the effort I'm putting out, you can support my content on Patreon. Thank you. See you next time.